Good morning, afternoon, or evening, folks. This is Valcor Drake Rider, beginning what will hopefully be merely the first installment of a series of Castle Magic guides and tutorials to help you make your interactive housing projects possible. In the future, my guides may be more focused on logic or individual magic items, but for this first video, I felt obligated to share my own most frequently used module. I call this module the Magic Sequencer, and it is used to give one trigger item, such as a button, lever, pressure plate, detector, timer, the ability to activate different outputs depending on how many times it has been activated. This is especially useful because it is a method to increase the number of effective targets an input can have, which is significant because of Castle Magic's limitation of having one unchanging target per spell. Examples of this module in my own works include a music changing system doubling as an evolving school tree, a piece uh, selection system for chess, various health and life systems, a system for changing the facing and directional movement of a boat, a system for moving a paddle, a convenient crafting station setup which cycles between each crafting station as you jump. As an example, I'll be making a table and button setup which cycles between the appearance of five different colored dragon pets. There is far more you could do with this example and many other uses. This is just an arbitrary choice to show you how to make it. So we're going to go ahead and start with our base module. Your base module is going to want as many outputs as you plan to have, minus one. In this case, we have five dragons that we want to individually appear on this table. So five minus one is four counters, four outputs, or five outputs with four counters. So we're going to go ahead and place our four counters. Each counter is going to have a reflector so that it can do more with its individual output. And your first counter is going to have an extra reflector. So in each of your equal value slots, go ahead and target their pertaining reflector. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a invisible magic button. And this is how the player is going to interact with the table in order to cycle between the different dragons. So I usually like to raise my magic button a little bit so that it is more localized with the table. So now you see we only get the prompt to use it when we are directly in front of the table. You'll also see that I already took the liberty of having all of our dragons uh, targeted to this breadcrumb so that they will remain stationary throughout this entire pro uh, process. Um, you might also prefer to put the dragons outside of uh, an area that the average player can see so that they appear to not be present until they are teleported. But for the uh, case of this example, it's going to be easier to visualize if I just keep them here. So now your input, in this case our invisible magic button, is going to add one to our first counter. And in each of the overvalue slots of our counters, you are going to add another add one to magic counter and target the uh, subsequent uh, counter thereafter. So our first counter's overvalue is going to target the second counter. Our second counter's overvalue is going to target the third, and our third counter's overvalue is going to target the fourth. Our fourth counter is in charge of cycling the entire process over again. So instead, in its overvalue slot, it's going to set the first magic counter to zero. Our first magic counter, when it is under value then, which will make our fifth output, is going to target this extra reflector here. In this extra reflector, you are also going to set the second counter to zero. Then, just like you did in the overvalue slots, but this time in the undervalue slots, you're going to add a set magic counter to zero and target the next subsequent counter. 
So this is in counter number two, so it's going to target counter number three, and counter number three is going to target counter number four. So each counter is going to need to be set at a test value of one. They start at a test value of one by default, but please ensure that they are indeed at one. Alrighty, so now what's going to happen is if we go ahead and we turn the display on for one of our counters here, as we press this button, we're going to see the number count up associated with the output. And then when this appears to be 5, which note that it is actually now at 0, um, this is a visual error that occurs when you add to a counter at the same time as setting it to 0. Even though it is effectively at 0, it will show the most previously uh, ascended number. So now we just got our fifth output, and then it will reset immediately back to one at our first output. So now that we have this system going where the button is going to output to each of these five different reflectors in order, we can go ahead and set up our visual effects. So to start, we're going to go ahead and have a reflector here, and we're going to first rotate it so it has the correct facing. Um, and then we're going to adjust it a little bit here so that it is nice and centered for us. Now once it is relatively centered, and you can give this about as much attention as you want, um, we are going to either have a timer or a start detector. I like using timers because they give me more options. Um, and we're going to go ahead and have this reflector here teleport our five other reflectors to it so that our dragons are going to teleport not to, to these positions but instead to this position. So let's go ahead and add our teleport target object here, which actually I'm going to need to buy one more here. So at the start, all of those reflectors are going to start here so that our dragons get sent to this location. I'm going to go ahead and buy one more of these. So now to actually set up these reflectors, the first one here is going to need to teleport our first dragon to it. Our second one is going to, or in our second slot of our first reflector, we're then going to need to restore the position of our uh, of our fifth dragon, since our first reflector, our first output, uh, our first output is going to occur directly after our fifth dragon. It needs to get rid of the fifth dragon in order to spawn our first dragon. So with each one, we're going to do the exact same thing. In the second one, we're going to go ahead and teleport our second dragon. In our third, we will be teleporting our third dragon. In our fourth, we will be teleporting our fourth dragon. And in our fifth, we will be teleporting our fifth dragon. Now let's go ahead and fill in the gaps with the restore object position. So our fifth one comes immediately after our fourth. We already did our first, so our second one comes immediately after our first dragon. Our third comes immediately after our second dragon. And our fourth comes immediately after our third dragon. So now, after I wait for our dragons a second so that they're all stationary, when I press this button, our first output is going to bring our first dragon, our second will bring our second dragon, third will bring our third dragon, fourth will bring our fourth dragon, fifth will bring our fifth dragon, and then it will restart back at one. 
cycling all the way through. And this is very spammable. So you can set a little bit uh, of a timer buff if you don't want it to be spammable, however you want to do it. Um, and then of course hide those dragons behind a wall if you don't want them to be otherwise visible unless you've done the teleportation. Um, and you can do this with invisibility and visibility if you want. Um, you can do this with movement spells if you're pertaining to a particular item. The possibilities are really endless here. For our second example, um, we are going to be making the system so that instead of cycling, we have the choice of moving the system choice forward or backwards. So for example, if I were to activate the left side button, I could go from output 1 to output 2. And then if I were to activate the right side button, I would go from output 2 back to output 1. So in order to do this, we're going to need two outputs. So I've gone ahead and I've gotten rid of our invisible button and added two buttons so we can distinguish between ascending or descending. Um, so each of these reflectors are paired with their own individual button through an activate reflector spell. So we're going to go ahead in our first reflector and put five magic counter spells. Um, in this case, we're going to want a counter for each output. So we're going to go ahead and add a counter and give our fifth output to that counter. Go ahead in the same same thing in the equal value slot target our reflector. Now I've gone ahead in each of our counters and removed the under and over value spells for each of them so they only have their equal spell per pertaining to their uh, reflector output. So we're going to go ahead and target each of these add one to counter spells that we just added to this reflector and target them to each of the counters. You want to do this in ascending order one by one. Now just the opposite, in this one we're going to put uh, subtraction spells. So we're going to subtract one from magic counter and we're going to go ahead and do one for each counter. And this time you're going to want to do it um, descending from top to bottom. Alrighty, so now when we activate this counter, one will be added, or not this counter, but this button, one will be added to our entire chain of counters. And when we activate this button, uh, one will be subtracted from our entire chain of counters. Now, we're going to go ahead and label the value for each of these to be the uh, value of their output. So this one is going to be a test value of one, our second output will be a value of 2. Our third will be a value of 3. And so on, all the way until our fifth. In our fifth counter, the overvalue spell is instead going to activate our subtraction reflector and in the undervalue slot of our first counter, we're going to activate the adding reflector. What is going to happen with this is it's going to prevent us from going out of bounds from these five outputs. So our counter chain could never reach a value of six because the instant it goes over value to six, it's going to be subtracted back to five. Same thing over here. It's not going to be able to reach zero because the instant that it reaches zero, it's going to be added back to one. So with that, we have the basic system for our second example set up. However, we have to do a little bit more work within our reflectors now, because not only do these reflectors have to account for resetting the dragon previous to them on one side, but also resetting the dragon previous to them on the other side. So for our first output, we no longer need to worry about our fifth dragon because our fifth dragon can no longer uh, come just before our first since it no longer cycles. So we're going to go ahead and target our second dragon since the second dragon could be selected before the first. So we're going to go ahead and go to our second now 
and this one still needs to restore the position of our first dragon because it can come before the second, but it also needs to restore the position of our uh, first dragon because, or our third dragon, because the third dragon coming from this direction can now come before it. In our third reflector, we also need to include the fourth. And in our fourth reflector, we also need to include the fifth. And now in our fifth output, we no longer need to worry about well, we don't need to worry about the first dragon since it's not going to be a, a problem cycling that way. Um, so it is already set up and good to go because the fourth dragon is the only one that can come before it. So now if we go ahead and we'll wait for our dragons here, if we go ahead and activate our first button, the counters will ascend, selecting in the same order as previously. If we activate our first button here, our over value in our last counter is also going to be subtracting, keeping it at 5. But if we go over here to our subtraction button, it's going to go back to our fourth, then again back to our third, second, and first. We can play around with this however we like. We can go from second back to first. We can go from third back to second back to first. However you want to play with this, you can. So it gives uh, a lot more variability to what you're able to do with the system. That about wraps up the demonstration of the Magic Sequencer module. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and that you'll be able to put this module to use in your own creations. Good luck, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.